welcome Clive here again um, I've had a request for a body float now uh, a body float um, was first developed uh, way back believe it or not in the probably 70s 80s um, long before uh, pole floats come into fashion fishing pole floats especially on the river now the body float is actually a float that was developed many many years ago um, by the Italians on the river Bol Bolognese uh, hence the name the Bolognese float and um, these uh, this river and these swims they used to fish was quite deep and they used uh, these long Bolognese rods they call them big telescopic rods 20 foot long and they use these type of floats um, to great effect and in fact uh, I get the impression as though they are similar to a large pole float. However, use a rod line with them and you can cast them out, you know, quite a distance. Now, I did use it in Ireland and uh, just um, in the World Championships and I just missed um, the main prizes. Um, that year, Italy actually won it in Ireland using the Bolly uh, method, the Bolly float and the, uh, and, and the Bolly rods. Of course, uh, as British anglers now uh, have got to terms with the Bali float and the Polynesian way of fishing and um, uh, quite often or not uh, a lot of rivers especially the deeper rivers are fished uh, with this method yeah the uh, the first time I come across um, as anything similar to this was a chap named Phil Lyons um, I don't know if he's still alive but he's an old float maker from South Wales where I live and he used to design these type of floats um, uh, for the, the River Wye of all places um, very similar to the Bolognese float uh, where he got the idea from the Bolognese uh, um, fishing I, I'm not sure because I think it was long before um, they come you know popular and apparent to the uh, British angler in the UK however he made a float very similar now I know there's a lot of companies make these type and basically if you look at a reverse pair um, with a shoulder on the top that's about it but I've um, I actually make a, um, a body floats um, slightly different than that I make it a, a elongated body um, in like a pear shape with a shoulder on the top um, I use uh, nylon uh, tips and I use carbon stems and um, you may have uh, seen a couple of my vlogs uh, fishing vlogs recently uh, where I'm actually using them um, I think yeah last week uh, I, I, I snagged them um, um, caught uh, five barb or for 16 pounds big four or five pounders and um and any other float just wouldn't work the same because you've got complete control over over the float and you can fish it at quite long distances as well um so anyway no further to do let's crack on and i'll show you how i make them okay uh before i uh, make them um what other viewers asked uh Ask about the medals I have hanging on the wall here. Um, i give you a quick show if you want to have a look. Um, that's, that's the gold uh, for the team. That's the gold individual. That's the bronze team. And there's the silver individual. And there's me picking up the trophies. So, I thought I'd just give you a, give you a quick uh, glimpse of... Uh, have years gone past? <laughs> I would say I'm over the top now because I still enjoy my fishing and still pick up a few bob. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on with the show you the, uh, how I make the floats. Okay, the first thing I need is uh, some dowel. Um, as I as I've already showed you, the dowel in previous videos it comes in sort of uh, three foot lengths. And now what I have to do is um, first of all cut to the size to the capacity. And the size capacity, um, in my experience, tells me it's about four and a quarter inches will, will give me an eight gram float, which is roughly about five swan shot. So that's an idea. So what I do, I first of all use my um, tape measure. Uh, I measure it four inches and I make a mark. I don't know if you actually see, I've already done this. Because I would need four, I've made four. Uh, marks along the balsa so I'll be cutting that um, in, a, in a straight line and I'll be sanding them off I'll 
Okay, I've just cut four off now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sand them uh, down nice and even. So a nice smooth surface on the end so I can mark off um, the centre of the dowel using that uh, tool, that special tool I've shown you previously. So let me just uh, get a good edge on these now. Um, I'll be putting these in a lathe to shape the body. Um, I'll be giving it quite a prominent shoulder and I will be uh, sanding it down to a point on the bottom of the float where I put the carbon stem into. Okay, so you can see that in a minute. There you go. Okay, I think you've seen this before, but I'll show it to you again. Black felt pen. Uh, I put my centralizing tool in the center of the balsa to grip in it, making my line one way, 90 degrees the other way. Yeah, that gives me the dead center. Okay, so I'll do that on both ends of the dowel. One, is, one end I'll be putting the carbon stem and the other end I'll be putting uh, the bristle, which will be a nylon bristle, um, very thick four and a half millimeter bristle. So you can see the, uh, the float at long distances. Um, so say it's a, it's a lovely float that works very well um, uh, in big rivers. You can trot it long distances and still see it. Um, it's a good idea to use long rods, of course. Oh, drops here. <laughs> um, I've been uh, using a 15-foot cadence rod lately and uh, been trying them out. Jamie Robinson, uh, who now runs the company. Um, yeah, they're pretty good, good rods. Um, in fact, I used to use Microlites, uh, Normac Microlites and uh, the Avenger for a while, but now I've, I've changed over to uh, these cadence rods and they're, they're quite good. I think there's a link on YouTube actually to the company. Uh, I know Jamie puts a lot of videos together. Uh, yeah, it's a nice lad, Jamie. He actually, uh, <laughs> I would say I'm getting old, but I'll get on a little bit. And, uh, I drew up the top end of the River Wye once up in what we call A section. It's a hell of a walk. Anyway, thankfully, Jamie uh, took my tackle up for me. You know, younger, fitter man like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but there's some ding dongs with him fishing as well. I think uh, the last few matches I've been in his section. I may, may, might have beaten him a couple of times, but hey, <laughs> be <you're> watching Jamie. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to mark off the uh, centers now of the, of the dowel, making sure I get a dead center. Um, obviously, very important you get a dead center because when it comes down to uh, shaping them on the lathe if you don't get it right it, it, the float can um, become a bit misshaped so uh, that's very important that I get the dead center so uh, let me just double check that I think at the end of the day it's all down to experience you know when I first started making floats I was <laughs> uh, one of the best but uh, let's say you know it's something you learn you know I've always messed around making floats all my life, really, over the years. Because the problem is you can't get, uh, you know, floats, especially this type of float, uh, from a from a tackle shop. You know, you, normally you have to make a lot of, uh, you know, special design floats. And, um, you know, they do come from uh, experience over the years. Recently, uh, they've been talking about an inline float, which... Um, that's something which I've got to start looking at and basically what it is, the line goes inside the float. Well, I know we use it on commercials. Um, you know, I've been making them for a year or two now. So there shouldn't be a problem in converting a few um, river floats, you know, like stick floats and balsas. And, um, you know, so they have an inline, um, you know, uh, hole, if you like. <laughs> so the line passes through the body and, it, you know, I suppose it saves... Um, you know, uh, the rubber's breaking and I suppose it's more direct to the fish. But it's something, we, you know, we have to look in because it's like everything in life. Um, you know, I've always liked to think I've been an innovator of fishing. 
uh, you know, of various things like my ground baits and fishing line and floats. And I, you know, obviously you've got to be on top of these things if it's going to give you the advantage and help you catch more fish. And in particular, especially if you're match fishing, you need to be on top of your game. So you've got to follow the trends and uh, you have to try these things out. Okay, I've got my carbon stems here. These are, um, again, these are very difficult to get hold of unless you know somebody, you know, who's actually imports them. But I managed to get a couple off a, a float maker uh, back last year. And, um, you know, uh, as I say, they're uh, excellent when it comes to making floats. Now, I've got two grades here. Um, I have a, uh, let's have a look. this one is, yeah, this one's about 15 and this one's about 20 uh, millimeters. So I'll be using the 20 millimeter grade. Okay, so they come in long lengths, as you can see, carbon. Um, I'll be cutting this down to fit the float. I'll be gluing it into the, uh, the dowel um, and putting it on the lathe so I can um, basically shape the float. Okay, uh, so right, I've got my carbon stem. I've centralized the hole. Bit of paint on me there. Um, and then what I'm doing, I'm, is I've made the hole, but I'm going to push this carbon stem in. I'm trying to keep it level as I'm pushing it into the soft pith of the balsa. Uh, pushing quite hard. Right, yeah, that's going in about half inch, I want a bit more than that, because I want it nice secure, that's it, yeah, uh, right, that's better, right, and that's about, that was, so what have I got there, I've got a good inch, so okay, so what I'll do, and I'll be putting some super glue on that, and I'll be putting it into the dowel, and letting that set, okay, what I'll do, and I'll just put a drop of super glue, not too much, Holding that firm now, and letting that dry for a little bit. And I'll be cutting this uh, stem off. Um, it's usually about six inches. Let me just double check. Yeah, about five and a half inches. <laughs> six, five and a half, yeah. And that'll be about it. So that, you know, that in, in experience, that tells me, you know, the length of stem uh, that I'll need. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just cut that off with my special nips. Okay, so when I've done that, what I'll do, I'll just sand that off to a little point uh, so that um, the float rubbers can easily slide onto the stem. Okay, let me just file that down into a little point. And then slowly. Okay, and that's ready for the uh, lathe. Just finishing a few other floats off, and I do, I'm doing four for a customer, so I might as well do them together. Making sure that it's yeah. I just have to think. I just have to give this a flatter edge. These floats, um, as I say, they uh, they work lovely in the water. They actually um, you you can control of these floats all the way down the swim, and you can mend the line. A uh, little tip: what I do, I uh, always buy a bit of grease on the line. Um, it's fly uh, tying grease, you know, the um, uh, in the flat little pads you get. And what I, what I'll do, I'll actually cast uh, out, let it run downstream, retrieve the um, the, the line with uh, holding the pad and the, and the muslin um, in my fingers and as I reel in um, 
the line will pass through the muslin and when it reaches i'll bring the float right to the top of the rod and then once i've done that i'll just let some line out of the rod and just grease it just above the float and um i tell you what what a difference it makes you know when you when you're casting and when you 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 you're, you're mending the line you can lift the line gently off the water and these floats will hold its position without moving out of um out of line and um you know as i say it's um is perfect for just holding back slightly as well because as you're holding it back the, the bait will lift slightly off the bottom and sometimes it tracks that bite that fish but um more about that in a minute okay i'm just <clears throat> just sorting out the right attachments um that's the uh size i need for this carbon stem um so this will go into the lathe now so I'll, get, I'll push that down to the base, just screwing it on so that it grips. And when I put this on, I'm going to make sure that, um, that I've got a few inches to play with, or well, a quarter of an inch at least, anyway. Now tighten that tight. So what I need to do now is make sure I put the end dead in the centre. What I need to do is just tighten the lathe up here, this um, this end bit. There you go. Right. Now by screwing this now, making sure that it's um, dead center of the dowel so when I turn that on I shouldn't have no movement so let's just double check yeah that's okay it's all set so now I'm going to start to um, file it down on the base first um, so I'm going to try like a, a long a gated pair um, and on the top I'll make a little shoulder as well um, say me doing it by hand so I got this uh, um, medium sort of sandpaper on one side and a, and a rougher on the other side. And um, I'll be uh, taking it down or shaping it with the rougher side first. So let's crack on. It's looking good that's about the shape you want okay there you go so as you can see it's quite a long gated sort of pair now next stage now um, I shall um, make it the hole in the top for the nylon bristle I'll be using a file for that. Yeah, I've managed to source uh, the exact size file to make the insertions, or to make an insertion ready for the bristle. So. Uh, 
this little handy took me a while but I managed to get one so I'm just making that little indentation and that should be about right now making sure it's dead center of course I look dead center to you Just to me. <laughs> okay, we'll see now. Because once you've got the bristling, you just turn the floater and you can see then if it's. Uh... If not, we'll have to start all over again. <laughs> yeah, we do get some wastage sometimes with floats that don't quite go exactly as you planned, but hey, that's uh, so it is. Okay, all right. I just received through the post. Um, all my uh, bristles come in packets of 50. Um, now, for the, the guys who uh, join up my patronage um, site, uh, I'll be leaving the details of where you can buy all these uh, materials. Okay, so it'll uh, very handy, it'll save you a lot of time and effort um, sourcing these products out when I'll give them to you uh, for free once you um, subscribe to my Patreon channel. Okay, let me just try that. Yeah, that's working good now. Yeah, just to say, yeah, just make sure I get that center now. Okay, a little bit of work. I need a little bit of work on this to get it dead center. And I'm just pushing that in to the smaller hole. There you are. Yeah, so that's about uh, central. Drop a super glue now, and we're almost done. Yeah, so I'm just going to put a drop of glue on there now. Yeah. So we're almost ready for painting. This is a pretty quick flow to make. It's a carbon stem. It's got a nice feel, a nice balance to it as well. So, uh, yeah. I used to put eyes on the top, but now I prefer to put a little silicone um, uh, float, adapt, uh, float rubber on the top now. And of course, smaller ones on the bottom, three, you know, one on the top, middle, and bottom. Okay, and that's. Uh, looking good now I think these are going to be green so I'll be painting them green look nice I'm using uh, the acrylic uh, green as well which is the sap green um, now I've already doped the float so I'm just going to put the, the paint on it now um, Sometimes it's a good idea to actually paint the float before you put the bristle in, but uh, in this case, I don't think it matters that much. As long as I'm careful when it comes to painting it around the side of the, um, the bristle, and because it's acrylic, you can wipe it off anyway. So, yeah. Anyway. Okay, there we go. I'll be letting that dry now and uh, I'll be varnishing it. I'll be putting the capacity on, which is uh, 8 gram. What a lovely float. Hopefully, in the next uh, week or two, um, now I've got my body cams working, I'm hoping uh, um, I'll be able, you'll be able to see some live action with me on the riverbank actually catching a few fish using this float. 
you know and there's the other three to the one I've already made so I quickly shape shape them now and uh, just need to paint them up now um, there you go and what I'm doing I'm going to put the bristle in last uh, on these because um, it's probably just as quick to, to do it that way anyway um, thanks for all the guys who's prescribed you know subscribing to me that's really nice um, building up slowly now I've um, 264 I think was the last count which not bad when considering this is a new channel for me and I've only been going um, you know a couple of weeks on it so you know that's looking good um, as I say put a thumbs up or a thumbs down now the ones who put a thumb down you know what you can do you can all fuck up as far as I said but only joking but listen um if you've got any constructive criticism please let me know nah, i don't care anyway i enjoy my fishing and i enjoy making these floats and i enjoy passing all my um knowledge on to people you know and over the years um somebody had to taught me or taught me when i was young a guy named larry powell um unfortunately he passed away at a very young age but I think we've all got a mentor that we've probably looked up to in, um, you know, in our past. In fact, I had a compliment not so long ago from a, a well-known match angler. Uh, I won't mention his name, but he was saying that it was due to the videos that I uh, made. Because I think, I, you know, I was one of the first to make, uh, you know, uh, videos um, in your VHS and B Todays. And um, anyway, this uh, angler in, uh, mentioned me. He said if it weren't for me watching my videos he well, probably wouldn't have um you know gone into match fishing and uh, took it up as serious as he did because his mother used to buy him uh these videos for his christmas and his birthday so yeah i like to think maybe along the way i've helped people over the years and um hey that's just all about it it's all about enjoying our fun our fishing I mean, I've tried uh, all types of fishing, you know, I've um, done a bit of commercial fishing. Um, and somebody asked me the other day, am I going to do anything on commercials? And yes, the answer is yes, of course I will. But um, I want to cover the river uh, flows first, you know, and all the uh, natural floats if I can, because um, I think it is important because a lot of these floats that I'm putting together, you can't really buy from um, shops, you know. Uh, normally you have to come to... Uh, a float maker, a specialist, um, <laughs> obscure in your view there, um, and to have them made. So, you know, yeah. Um, as I say, I've got a bit of a fan base now. I mean, you know, when I say fan base, people who follow me and, you know, ask me questions about fishing, and, you know, I'm more than happy to you know, pass on any information I can, you know. Um, I mean, I set up the patron pages, you know, I don't know whether I'm going to make any money at it, you know, you know, it'd be nice, it's always nice to make a living out of something you enjoy doing in life, you know. Um, as I say, I've, I've been sponsored by uh, big companies in the past, um, but they're very short-lived, a lot of these um, companies, I've seen them come and I've seen them go, so, you know, uh, but that's the nature of the game. I mean, over the last few years, um shopping online is killing the trade unfortunately you know as far as uh, the small shops they're closing all the time now and um you know i think uh, in in my hometown uh, when i was a young lad there was at least half a dozen uh, shops there's two left now and there's one on the commercials on the outside of the town um but no i think uh, most people buy their stuff online now these days and of course when it comes to buying the bait they have to go to the tackle shop um so don't blame the tackle shops from uh, charging a bit extra than they would normally. Obviously, they have to pay their rent and their wages. Um, but as I say, I've been in the trade myself. Um, I tried setting up a shop and I have um, I was a rep for many years for a couple of companies. Uh, but now, hey, I enjoy making my floats. I'm retired. I do what I want to do when I want to, fish the matches I want to. Um, I still fish the uh, leagues. I still fish a couple of teams. Um, I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, you're tied down to the team, but hey, um, I think it's about the only uh, bit of fun you have these days, because if you draw a bad swim, you're still trying to, your best to catch fish, to beat the anglers around you, to help the, um, the team, you know, the points. 
so yeah I, I, I still enjoy that you know and all the fun and the banter I think at the moment we're lying second in the uh, in or joint second in, in the winter league at the moment with one match to go so uh, those who follow my vlog look out for that this coming Sunday <laughs> anyway but a lot of these people a lot of people are obviously uh, viewing this won't uh, won't uh, they'll probably see it after because uh, these sort of videos you can go back and watch them time and time again um, so you know I remember Tom Pickering uh, saying on an advert once you, you can you can watch them time and time again yeah <laughs> uh, oh, oh Tommy's got the feeder fish now old Tommy yeah I should know him well Dennis I met up with Dennis White and of course I talk about legends now legends of fishing unfortunately I haven't got them these days you got good anglers yeah yeah but you haven't got the legends like the Kevin Ashes you know and um Bob Nutt Bob Nutt's still around yeah Bob if you're watching happy Christmas uh, we just had uh, you know we just had a little um message either way on Facebook but um hey it's just all about it's living on our memories now I think as you get to our age but as I said if I can pass anything on to uh to the anglers the younger anglers as I say there's not so many youngsters these days but uh we're getting a few coming through anyway right so there's the float almost finished now whoops now you dropped the whole bloody thing on the floor <laughs> um all i need to do now is uh varnish it put the capacity on it um pack them and ship them so uh, uh i won't shoot well you can watch me if you want to you want to sit back and watch me varnish them and and so on but not much uh, you're gonna learn from that um like i say this is a great float um yeah, the, this float is, is a bit uh, different because um, as well as, uh, as casting and trotting the float, very sensitive, um, you know, because uh, of the bristle. And uh, as I say, um, a lot of floats now these days are aerodynamically shaped, which these are. Uh, easy to cast, underarm, overarm. Uh, and these are in green because I can do them in white and black. I mean, they're easy to make. You know, if you get all the materials, have a go yourself. Easy enough. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. I don't care. <laughs> but hey, enjoy yourself. And um, I'll see you in the next one.